Welcome to Paranormal Pages. Let's get straight into the true scary stories. Echoes of silence. It started as a faint murmur, like the wind brushing through a distant forest. But even that is too poetic for the raw strangeness of it. The sounds came to me one winter night a year ago, soft and incoherent, yet undeniably there, like static buzzing in my ears. At first I thought it was a trick of the mind, maybe the isolation of my house feeding into something twisted and obsessive. I just moved into this old Victorian house on the outskirts of town, all high ceilings and creaky floors, the kind of place that didn't need much imagination to feel haunted. At night, the sounds grew clearer, pulling me into a trance-like state, as though each word, or what passed for words, had weight wrapping around my mind. It didn't take long before I realized that the strange whispers I heard weren't coming from the house, but from the future. Exactly one year ahead, I could hear faint echoes of voices, laughter, cries, and secrets being shared. My own life reflected back to me, one day at a time, yet always a year ahead. No one would believe me, of course, so I kept it to myself, but it was a secret that filled every quiet corner of my life. Tonight, though, something is wrong. The whispers have stopped. The house feels colder, emptier, the silence sitting heavy as though waiting for something. In the dark, I feel the weight of the quiet like a pressing hand on my chest. Maybe it's finally over, I whisper to myself, the sound oddly loud against the stillness. But even as I try to convince myself, I know there's something hollow in that thought. The whispers were strange, sure, but they'd become my constant, my own strange little ritual. Without them, I feel exposed, as if I've been cast into a world I don't belong in. I light a candle in the living room, the soft glow pushing back the shadows, but just barely. The floorboards creak behind me, the familiar groaning sound that comes with any old house. I spin around, candle in hand, but the room is empty. Is anyone here? I ask, my voice too quiet as if I'm afraid to hear an answer. Only silence replies, thick and almost tangible. Hours pass. My anxiety grows, twisting into something sharper and colder, filling my chest like ice. Then just as I'm drifting off on the couch, I hear it, a single whisper, faint but unmistakable, curling out from the darkness behind me. It's time. The voice is different, jagged, almost mocking. I freeze, unable to breathe, feeling its weight as it snakes through the room, settling around me like a cold fog. It isn't a voice from the future. It's something else, something closer, something present. My heart races and I swallow back a gasp, determined to stay quiet. But I can feel it. Something has crossed a boundary. Something has slipped into my world now that the future's whispers have ceased. I rise slowly, each step measured as I edge toward the front door, desperate to escape. My hand wraps around the cold brass handle, but as I turn it, the door doesn't budge. I twist harder, feeling sweat bead down my forehead, but the door remains locked as if the house itself is holding me in. The panic rises, clawing up my throat, but I press it down, forcing myself to think clearly. I try the door handle again, my knuckles white, hoping it will give way. When it doesn't, I slowly release my grip, realizing that every part of the house feels aware. The silence hums, a low vibration, as though the walls are pulsing with some dark anticipation. It's then that I feel it, the cold, creeping sensation of being watched, of something pressing in on me waiting for me to move, to slip up. Just as I turn to find another exit, a shadow darts across the hall, quick as a blink, vanishing into the dark recesses near the staircase. My heart pounds as I strain to make sense of what I saw. It had form, I think, a hunched figure, taller than a man, with an unnatural stillness that seemed to suck the air out of the room. No, I whisper, barely able to recognize my own voice. It can't be real. You're just tired. It's all in your head. But the words fall flat, my voice sounding small and weak in the suffocating silence. I reach for my phone, fumbling with it in shaking hands. But when I try to dial, there's no signal, just the soft hiss of static. My heart sinks as I glance back down the hallway. A single dim light spills from an old sconce halfway down the hall, flickering as if it too knows something is terribly wrong. The silence returns, thicker, more oppressive, as if the house itself is waiting for me to make the next move. Desperate for anything that could lead me out, I call out, Hello? Is someone there? My voice echoes back, 
distorted, curling around me in a strange, warping sound that seems to twist into laughter, a laugh that sounds far too familiar. My own voice laughs back at me, mocking, taunting. The candle flickers wildly in my hand, casting dancing shadows that seem to writhe along the walls, like something waiting just beyond sight, lurking in the spaces where the light doesn't reach. Then the voice, my own, whispers again, this time directly in my ear. They left the door open for you. I spin around, cold sweat slicking my back, but there's no one there. The words are chilling, layered with a menace that feels too real to ignore. I back away, edging toward the stairwell, keeping my eyes on the hallway. The air is thick with a smell now, damp and cloying, like rotting wood and earth after rain. I step backward onto the first creaky step, trying to move as silently as possible, but each step groans louder than the last, as if warning whatever is lurking that I'm coming. My eyes dart from shadow to shadow, anticipating another flicker of that impossible figure, that distorted form that I can still feel like something embedded in my memory, refusing to be erased. When I reach the landing, I find myself in front of an old door at the end of the hall, one that I don't remember seeing before. My hand trembles as I reach for the door, heart hammering with a strange blend of terror and compulsion. As my fingers touch the handle, the temperature drops sharply, a frigid cold wrapping around me, filling my lungs with icy air. Then I hear it clear and unmistakable, a heartbeat pulsing steadily from beyond the door as if something alive is waiting just on the other side, something that knows I'm here and has been waiting for a very, very long time. My hand hovers over the door handle, dread twisting into every muscle, but the pull is irresistible, like a nightmare where your feet drag you towards something you know you shouldn't see. The heartbeat beyond the door grows louder, a deep, reverberating pulse that fills the silence, vibrating in my bones. My hand finally closes around the cold metal, and with a soft creak, I push the door open. The room beyond is small and bare, a forgotten corner of the house that feels impossibly old. Shadows pool in the corners, deep and impenetrable, as though they're hiding things that have never seen light. And in the center of the room lies a trapdoor, its edges frayed with splinters and dark stains that make my stomach lurch. My pulse races as I approach it, the heartbeat now pounding in my head, sinking with my own. I drop to my knees, my fingers shaking as I trace the edge of the trapdoor. Suddenly, a voice cuts through the silence, a whisper so close I feel the breath on my ear. Don't go down there. I jump, twisting around to find no one. But I know what I heard, and the words cling to me, digging into my mind. Part of me wants to heed the warning, to back away, to seal this door and leave the house entirely. But another part, a darker, more curious part, compels me forward. I take a deep breath, grip the iron ring embedded in the trapdoor, and lift. A rush of stale, damp air spills out, carrying with it a sharp, metallic smell that burns my nostrils. Beneath the trapdoor, a narrow staircase spirals down into darkness. My candle barely illuminates the first few steps, and beyond that, the void is absolute. Hello? I call out, the words swallowed instantly by the oppressive silence below. But something calls me downward, a sensation too strong to resist. I place my foot on the first step, then the next, descending slowly as the light of the candle flickers and dances against the stone walls. As I descend, I hear it again, a scraping sound, like claws or nails dragging across wood. I freeze, the hair on the back of my neck prickling as the sound grows louder, closer. I hold my breath, listening, and then through the silence, a voice rises from below, raw and hollow, a sound so unnatural it's almost a moan. You're too late, it whispers, the words echoing up the stairs, tangling in the darkness. I pause, my body tense, but a twisted compulsion forces me onward. I reach the bottom of the staircase, where the floor is rough stone, damp and cold beneath my feet. In the dim candlelight, I see it. Scattered across the floor are small, tattered objects. Fragments of photographs, yellowed and brittle, a child's shoe, and a strange, tarnished pendant glinting faintly. The sight fills me with an overwhelming sadness, as though each item holds a memory, a piece of someone's life left here to rot. Then I notice the final item, a large, ancient mirror propped against the wall, its glass so dark it reflects nothing at all. I step closer, drawn to its strange, empty depths. 
My face stares back at me, but as I watch, my reflection twists, shifting into something distorted and wrong. The eyes looking back at me aren't mine. They're dark, hollow pits that seem to consume the light. A low growl rumbles from somewhere behind me, and I whip around, the candle guttering. The shadow from the hallway is there, the hunched figure standing at the edge of the darkness, close enough that I can see its pale, stretched skin, its elongated arms tipped with claw-like fingers. It tilts its head, grinning with a mouth full of sharp, uneven teeth. Welcome, it hisses, its voice a rasp of malice. I stumble backward, my pulse racing as the creature steps forward, inching closer, filling the room with the stench of decay. Panicked, I turn to flee up the stairs, but as I do, the trapdoor above slams shut, plunging me into darkness. My pulse thunders in my ears as the darkness closes in, pressing against me from every side. I pound on the trapdoor, desperate to force it open, but it doesn't budge. The creature's rasping breaths fill the small chamber, each one a cold whisper that sends a chill racing down my spine. It's close now, its jagged fingernails scraping against the stone floor, inching forward. You shouldn't have come, it murmurs, the words slithering like oil through the suffocating blackness. You wanted to hear the future, but now the past has found you. The candle has all but sputtered out, casting only the faintest glow across the walls, and in that dim, trembling light, I see the creature reach out. Its hand is skeletal, pale as ash, with fingers that seem to stretch and twist unnaturally, almost melding into the shadows. I can feel its touch even before it reaches me, a cold that seeps into my bones, rooting me in place. My mouth opens in a silent scream, terror gripping me too tightly to make a sound. I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping this is all a nightmare, a twisted product of my imagination, but I know it's real. This thing, this presence is here, and it's waiting for me to look at it, to acknowledge its existence fully. My breath comes in short, shallow gasps as I force my eyes open. The creature's face is inches from mine, its hollow eyes fixed on me with an intensity that defies words. All those voices, it hisses, its breath cold against my skin. You thought they were your future, but they were mine. They were memories. I stumble back, my mind reeling. Memories? My memories? But no, the whispers I heard every night. Laughter, secrets, all the moments of my life I'd thought were yet to come. They weren't mine at all. They belonged to something else, some force trapped here long before I arrived. A force that had waited patiently, feeding on my life, twisting it into a soundscape to haunt me. Why? I managed to choke out, my voice barely a whisper. The creature's grin widens, a sick, warped smile that stretches its face in unnatural ways. You were open, it murmurs, reaching out to brush a clawed finger against my cheek. Every day, listening, inviting me in, letting me feed on your life. The words sink in, a horrible truth settling over me. Each whisper, each night of static and faint sounds of the future, it had all been a trick, a lure to draw me deeper into this place, to keep me here, with it. I bolt for the walls, clawing at the stone, desperate to find an escape, but it's no use. The walls seem to pulse, alive and impenetrable, as though the very house itself has turned against me. The creature laughs, a dry, echoing sound, as it watches me struggle. There's no way out, it says, its voice thick with triumph. You've become part of it now, just like the others. A shiver runs through me as I look around the room, seeing it with new eyes. The photographs, the forgotten belongings scattered across the floor, they're pieces of other lives, others who had heard the whispers and been pulled in, trapped here with this thing, left to vanish and fade. I realize, with mounting horror, that I am only the latest in a long line of victims, bound to this place, a silent echo in a house that consumes memories. As the darkness closes in, swallowing the last glimmer of light, the creature leans in close, its voice a final, chilling whisper. When they hear the future, they'll be hearing you. The last thing I hear is my own voice, echoing into the silence, fading until there's nothing left. Hey, subscribe for more true scary stories. Story 2, The Whisper Beneath. I never believed I would hear those words whispered back to me. Not in the dead of night, with the room shrouded in shadows and the only sound being the soft hum of the heater struggling against the bitter winter chill. My wife Anna was lying beside me, her breathing shallow and steady in sleep, her dark hair spilling across her pillow. But something was off that night. 
A heaviness pressed down on the room, wrapping around me like a cold, invisible shroud. I lay there, staring at the ceiling, feeling the weight of the silence. My hand reached out instinctively, my fingers brushing her shoulder. In that strange quiet, I whispered, I love you, a simple gesture to ground myself, a reminder of the warmth beside me. But what I heard next tore through that calm, unraveling it with a cold dread that clawed its way down my spine. A voice, faint, almost a rasp, echoed from somewhere beneath our bed. I love you too. I jerked upright, heart pounding, as a hollow silence filled the room once again. For a moment, I thought I had imagined it. The heater's hum grew louder, almost drowning out the echo of the words. I glanced over at Anna, but her eyes remained closed, undisturbed. My mind raced, trying to make sense of it. Maybe it was some trick of the heater, some malfunction or random sound warped into an eerie phrase in the night. Yet, deep down, I knew. I had heard it. I whispered her name, tentatively nudging her. Anna, did you? My voice sounded alien to my own ears, brittle and afraid. She didn't stir. Her breathing was too steady, too deep. Reluctantly, I shifted, turning to the edge of the bed, inching toward the floor. The darkness under the bed seemed deeper than usual, pooling in an unnatural way, an abyss that seemed to beckon with silent, chilling intent. Gathering my nerve, I lowered myself, bracing with one hand against the bed frame as I leaned over, peering down into the shadow. I waited, my breath held. There was nothing there, only darkness and the bare floorboards. Yet even as I strained to see, a faint sound slithered into the silence, a soft rhythmic tapping, like fingers against wood coming from directly below me. For a moment, I felt paralyzed. Logic told me to pull back, to get as far from that edge as I could, to simply close my eyes and pretend the night would pass without any other horrors. But something rooted me there, curiosity mixed with fear, and slowly, without thinking, I reached down, fingers grazing the cold floor. And then I heard it again, that voice, unmistakably mine this time. From beneath the bed came a breathy whisper, so close I could almost feel it. Why don't you come down here, love? I recoiled, pulling my hand back as if I'd touched fire. Scrambling back onto the bed, my heart thundering in my chest. My breaths came in ragged gasps as I stared at the spot where my hand had just been, my fingers tingling with a chill that felt as if it had come straight from some dark, forgotten place. I kept my gaze fixed on the floor, waiting, bracing for. I wasn't even sure. Movement? A figure? Anna shifted beside me, stirring from sleep, and I felt a sudden flood of relief. She blinked her eyes open, looking at me with a sleepy confusion, completely unaware of the terror that had just unfolded in the room. What are you doing? She murmured, her voice muffled as she rubbed her eyes. It's the middle of the night. I wanted to tell her everything, but the words caught in my throat. I didn't want to seem irrational, disturbed. I swallowed, finally managing. Did you hear anything, just now? My voice sounded barely like my own, weak and tremulous. She frowned, propping herself up slightly. Hear what? You're scaring me, David. Her gaze softened as she placed a hand on my shoulder, attempting to soothe me. What's going on? I opened my mouth, ready to tell her about the whisper, the voice, the tapping. But just as I did, a noise, a soft dragging sound like fabric sliding across the floor, cut through the room. My head whipped around, and I saw it. A dark shape, shadow-like, retreating under the bed, vanishing before my eyes. I was too stunned to move, frozen as that blackness slithered out of sight. She followed my gaze, her eyes widening in realization. Did you see that? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. Please, tell me I'm not imagining things. I had never seen her like this, her face drained of color, her eyes glistening with the sharp edge of fear. I nodded, my hand finding hers in the dark. I saw it, I whispered. The words sounded like an admission, as if saying them made the thing under the bed all too real. A dreadful silence settled over us, punctuated by the muffled creaks from beneath us. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was there, lying in wait, lingering just below. Anna squeezed my hand tightly, pulling me closer. We should look, together, she said, though her voice shook, betraying the fear she was trying to suppress. I wasn't sure what was worse, seeing it again or the unbearable suspense of waiting for it to reappear. But we had to know. We had to see what was lurking in that dark space beneath us. We edged toward the floor, both of us peering over the bed's edge. 
The silence was suffocating. Shadows pooled beneath us, unnaturally dark, dense. For a long moment we saw nothing, just the empty floorboards. I felt almost foolish, but then, as if in slow motion, something blinked back at us. Two pinpricks of light, eyes, watching us from the darkness. And then the voice returned, closer than before, a faint whisper that sounded like it came from within the walls, within the floor, even within my own mind. I love you, it breathed, but this time it was layered, as though hundreds of voices were speaking as one, a chorus of longing and despair, pulling at my thoughts, beckoning me downward. My entire body went cold, my pulse racing as I grabbed Anna's hand, dragging her back onto the bed. She clutched me, her body trembling. I could feel her heartbeat against my arm. Rapid and panicked, we sat there back to back staring at the floor, unable to look away, unable to escape the horror that was inching its way closer. The next few nights, we didn't sleep. We tried, of course, but the shadows under the bed seemed to grow thicker, like ink spilling into our lives, staining every corner of our minds with dread. During the day, we pretended things were normal. Anna would give me a faint smile as she brewed her morning coffee, and I'd smile back, both of us too afraid to acknowledge the creeping darkness that had settled into our lives. But at night, the silence returned, filling the house with an unsettling stillness that felt almost alive. I could sense the thing waiting, lingering beneath us, its whispers slipping through the cracks in the night. The worst part was that we hadn't told anyone. How could we? Who would believe that we had something living, or rather existing under our bed? On the fourth night, as the moonlight cut through the room in thin, pale beams, I heard it again. The voice, soft and close, whispering, Come down here, love. I'm waiting. I clamped my hand over my mouth, stifling a gasp. The voice had grown louder, more insistent, and for the first time it sounded almost like Anna. That was the breaking point. I couldn't take it any longer. I had to confront whatever was lurking down there. Anna, I whispered, nudging her awake. Her eyes snapped open, filled with a quiet, resigned terror. She didn't say anything, just nodded as if she knew what I was about to do. I reached for the flashlight I had stashed by the bed, gripping it tightly as I knelt down, preparing to face the thing that had haunted us for nights. Stay here, I whispered, though I knew it was futile. She wouldn't leave me to face this alone, no matter how terrified we both were. She knelt beside me, her hand clamped on my arm as we took a deep breath and inched toward the bed's edge, the flashlight trembling in my hand. Slowly, I clicked it on and aimed the beam into the darkness beneath us. The light cut through the shadows, but it felt weak, as though the darkness was swallowing it, pulling it in. I strained my eyes, and then slowly, something began to take shape. A figure, twisted and contorted, lying with its face pressed against the floorboards, staring back at us with hollow, sunken eyes that seemed to go on forever. It was me, or rather a version of me, lying there with a crooked smile, mirroring every terrified movement we made. My own face, pale and stretched, whispered up at us, I love you, Anna. The words slithered out of its mouth, each one like a spider crawling up my spine. Beside me, I heard Anna's muffled sob, but I couldn't look away. The thing under the bed raised a hand, its fingers bent at unnatural angles, and began clawing its way toward us, the twisted smile widening. I scrambled back, pulling Anna with me as the light flickered, casting shadows across the room. I could feel the weight of its gaze on us, that twisted smile widening in a way that felt almost hungry. The air turned cold, and with every inch it dragged itself closer. The room felt like it was shrinking, walls pressing inward, trapping us with that thing. We stumbled backward, but no matter how far we tried to retreat, the distance between us seemed to shrink. It was like the thing was warping space itself, pulling us closer with an invisible hand. I reached for the door, desperate to escape, but the handle wouldn't turn. Panic surged as the creature under the bed whispered again, its voice overlapping with mine, mocking and twisted. Don't leave me, it hissed, the tone shifting to Anna's voice, dripping with desperation. Please, come closer. And then, the room plunged into complete darkness, the flashlight flickering off as the whisper grew into a chorus, each voice overlapping, each one calling us closer. We were trapped, surrounded by our own voices echoing in the dark. The last thing I heard was Anna's scream beside me, sharp 
and desperate before something yanked her down toward the floor, vanishing into the darkness below. I lunged forward, screaming her name, but my hands met only empty air. Anna was gone, pulled into the blackness beneath the bed as if she had been swallowed whole by it. My breath came in shallow gasps, heart thundering, my mind racing as I grappled with the impossible. I clawed at the floor, searching, but all I could see was that thick, undulating darkness, like a pit that had opened up into the floor, stretching endlessly beneath our bed. Anna, I shouted, my voice raw and broken, echoing back at me, distorted and hollow. For a brief moment, I thought I heard her voice, faint and terrified, calling my name from somewhere far, far below. But as I strained to listen, that chorus of whispers returned, drowning her out, each voice a warped reflection of my own. They were laughing, taunting, and mixed in with my voice. I could hear hers, twisted and frantic. I forced myself to look down, to stare into that void, to find her. The darkness seemed to shimmer, swirling in a way that made my head spin, and then I saw it. A flash of her face, distorted and ghostly, looking up at me from below, her mouth open in a silent scream. Her eyes, wide, pleading, seemed to reach through the darkness, pulling at my heart with a desperate intensity. Please, I whispered, reaching down into that void, my hand trembling. I didn't know what I was doing or how I could save her, but I couldn't leave her there, trapped in whatever nightmare lay below. My fingers brushed against something icy, and I gripped it, pulling with every ounce of strength I had. Slowly, Anna's form emerged, pale and cold, her eyes staring straight through me as if she were somewhere else, someplace unreachable. She looked like Anna, but something was wrong. Her gaze felt empty, distant. Anna, I asked, my voice barely a whisper. She blinked slowly, her mouth twitching into a faint, strange smile. I'm here, love, she murmured, but her voice didn't sound quite like hers. It was too soft, too hollow, each word stretching into the silence. I kept holding her, feeling her fingers curl around mine, but they were cold, unnaturally so, and her grip felt different, firmer, as if something else were guiding her movements. Without warning, she pulled me toward the bed, her grip tightening painfully. Come down with me, she whispered, her voice slipping into that chorus of voices I'd heard before, each one clawing at my mind. I tried to pull back, but she held me fast, her eyes locking onto mine, her gaze dark and endless. It's better down here, David, so much better. Panic surged as I yanked my hand back, breaking her grip, stumbling backward into the wall. My mind screamed at me to run, to escape, but I couldn't leave her, couldn't abandon her to whatever horror had taken her. I watched in horror as she crawled back to the edge of the bed, her movements unnatural, jerky, like a marionette on invisible strings. She knelt at the edge, tilting her head at an angle too sharp, too unnatural. It's so dark here, she whispered, her eyes glistening with something inhuman, but it's peaceful. As I watched, unable to move, her form began to dissolve, as if she were melting into the darkness, her features blurring, becoming part of that inky void. I reached out, shouting her name, but the shadows swallowed her whole, leaving nothing behind but an eerie silence that pressed down on me with a suffocating weight. A final whisper floated up from the darkness, Anna's voice faint but unmistakable as it faded into the endless black. I'll be waiting, love. And then the shadows receded, leaving the room empty, silent. I stood there, alone, staring at the spot where she had disappeared, the weight of the silence crushing me. Somewhere beneath the floor, I could still hear that faint, rhythmic tapping, like fingers against wood, patiently, endlessly calling me closer. Hey, subscribe for more true scary stories. Story three, the last destination. The rain hammered on my windshield as I sped down the lonely, twisting road, the wipers struggling to keep up with the torrent. I'd been driving for hours, following the soft robotic voice of my GPS, but as the night grew darker, I realized I was in the middle of nowhere. The barren landscape, drenched in fog, gave no indication of a place I'd recognize. I glanced at the screen, seeing the faint blue line cutting through blank space. Recalculating, it chimed softly, as if amused by my confusion. Where am I? I muttered, glancing at the GPS, hoping for a landmark to guide me. There was nothing but the silent black stretch of road ahead and miles of dense forest on either side. In the passenger seat, my phone glowed with a faint message from my friend, 
Are you sure you don't want me to come with you? I'd brushed her off earlier, determined to take this trip alone. Now I wished I hadn't. Just then, the voice in my GPS spoke again. In one mile, turn left, it instructed. Something about the tone, like a whisper coated with faint static, felt different. I swallowed, gripping the steering wheel, a chill prickling the back of my neck. I was certain I'd entered the coordinates correctly, but every turn felt like it was leading me deeper into some unknown, twisted version of reality. Okay, calm down, I told myself. It's just the rain, the dark, nothing's wrong. But a part of me couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I glanced at the rearview mirror, half expecting to see headlights, but all that stared back was an unending ribbon of darkness. I turned on the radio, hoping the static-filled tunes might calm me, but the reception was dead. The only sound was the low hum of my engine and the relentless rain. The GPS spoke up again, its voice a touch too eager. In half a mile, your destination is ahead. I felt a strange sense of dread wash over me. The road ahead twisted up into the hills, fog thickening until I could barely see a few feet in front of the car. Something felt off, like the air itself was alive, watching, waiting. I tightened my grip on the wheel as my headlights illuminated the narrow path ahead, lined with gnarled trees that leaned inward, forming twisted arches. Their branches, skeletal and leafless, reached out like bony fingers scratching at my windows. As the GPS announced my arrival, the voice, distorted, almost gleeful, chuckled softly, the sound barely audible but chilling to the bone. You have reached your final destination. My eyes snapped back to the road just in time to see it end, a cliff's edge looming ahead. I slammed the brakes, my heart hammering as the car screeched to a halt, mere inches from the precipice. I sat frozen, staring into the vast black void below, feeling the cold sweat trickle down my neck. But before I could catch my breath, the GPS voice echoed again, softer, sinister. Would you like to recalculate? My hands trembled as I gripped the wheel, trying to steady my breathing. The cliff's edge loomed just in front of me, where darkness stretched out into nothingness. I swallowed hard, throwing a quick glance back at the GPS, half expecting it to say something else. But the screen was blank now, completely dark, as if drained of life. I jabbed at it, trying to bring it back to life, but nothing happened. It sat there, unresponsive, mocking me in its silence. What? What is this? I muttered, my voice cracking slightly. I wasn't ready to get out of the car, but sitting here felt worse, like I was a sitting duck in someone's twisted game. Outside, the rain had lightened to a steady drizzle, and the fog hung low, twisting around the trees in unnatural patterns. Against my better judgment, I cracked the window a little, hoping the fresh air would help me think but the damp, earthy smell that flooded in only heightened my discomfort. It was like decay, heavy and thick, curling into the car like an invisible hand reaching for me. A soft voice, almost a whisper, cut through the silence. Turn back, it said. I froze, convinced I was hearing things, but the voice grew louder, insistent. Turn back, or face the consequences. I spun around, expecting someone to be standing there, but I was alone. All I could see were the twisted trees lining the road, branches swaying as if waving me away. Then, suddenly, the voice laughed, a low, dark chuckle that echoed in my ears and made my skin crawl. I slammed the window shut, trying to trap out the sound, but it only grew louder, worming its way into my mind. I tried to shake it off, but something about that laugh felt familiar. Intimate, as though it was part of me, rooted deep inside. Every instinct screamed at me to get out of there, but the road back was barely visible, shrouded in fog and shadows. I fumbled for my phone, hoping to call someone, anyone, but when I looked at the screen, I nearly dropped it. The GPS app was still open, though my device had been off for the last mile. In bright red letters it read, Final Destination Confirmed. My hands shook as I stared at it, the world spinning around me. It felt like a trap had been sprung and I was the prey. Just then, the screen flickered and a distorted face appeared, a pale, sunken-eyed figure with a twisted grin and hollow cheeks. It watched me, almost amused. Did you think you could just leave? The face hissed, its eyes locking onto mine. You're here now, and you're not going anywhere. The screen blinked again, the face vanishing, leaving only those haunting words burned into my mind. Desperation clawed at me. I yanked the door open, the cold rain slapping my face as I stumbled out of the car. 
I took one last look at the cliff's edge before I ran, back down the narrow path from where I'd come. But with each step, I felt something watching me, pressing down on me from all sides. The trees loomed, their shadows twisting as if they were reaching out. I could swear I heard footsteps mirroring my own, and every time I glanced back, I thought I caught a glimpse of that face, flickering in and out between the trees, haunting, relentless. Then the voice whispered again, a mocking lilt to its tone. You have nowhere left to go. I kept running, my feet slipping on the wet earth as I plunged deeper into the darkness. My breath came in ragged gasps, each one swallowed by the thick, oppressive fog that wound its way around me like tendrils. I could feel eyes on me, hundreds of them, hidden in the shadows between the trees. Branches clawed at my arms, tearing at my clothes, but I pushed forward, praying I'd reach the main road. Somewhere behind me, the laughter started again. It was distant at first, soft as a whisper, but it grew louder with each step I took, echoing through the forest. Running won't save you, it taunted, a voice that seemed to vibrate inside my skull. I stumbled, my knees hitting the ground as pain shot up my legs, but I couldn't stop. I forced myself back up, each heartbeat drumming louder than the next, urging me to flee. The path twisted and turned in ways I didn't remember, and I began to suspect that it was shifting, leading me in circles. I whipped my head around, feeling a hot breath brush against the back of my neck, but saw nothing. The shadows were dense, shifting like they were alive, and I could almost make out shapes moving within them. Shadows that walked, stalked, and slithered just out of reach. And then the voice was there, closer, its breath on my ear. You thought you could escape, it whispered. I spun around, only to see an empty, fog-filled trail. But I knew it was there, lurking, watching. Leave me alone, I shouted, my voice trembling. The fog absorbed my words, smothering them as soon as they left my mouth. And then, to my horror, it answered back. You brought this on yourself, it murmured, almost gently. I could feel something tightening around me, like invisible chains pulling me closer, binding me to the forest. The ground felt soft beneath my feet, as if it would open up and swallow me whole. Every step felt harder, like the earth itself was fighting me. Up ahead, the faintest glimmer of light caught my eye, a flickering orange glow peeking through the trees. Hope surged through me, and I ran toward it, desperate for any sign of escape. As I drew closer, I saw it was a lone lantern, hanging from a tree branch. But the sight stopped me in my tracks. The lantern was covered in rust and grime, its glass cracked and smeared with what looked like old, dried blood. The light inside wasn't a flame. It was a sickly, pulsing glow that seemed to throb in time with my heartbeat. It cast an eerie circle of light on the ground, and in its glow I saw faint footprints. Mine, leading straight to the cliff. My mind spun. I'd been here before, I had somehow looped back to where I started. No, I whispered, backing away, feeling panic claw at my chest. I glanced behind me, half expecting to see the face again, but the path was empty. The laughter, however, was all around, thick and mocking, seeping from the trees and the fog like a poison. You can't run from what's already inside you, it purred, the voice shifting tones, almost as if several voices were speaking at once. I staggered back, feeling the cliff edge just a few steps away. In the flickering light of the lantern, the fog took shape, forming dark, twisted figures with hollow eyes and gaping mouths. They surrounded me, whispering, their voices slithering over each other in a tangled cacophony of dread. They stretched their arms toward me, shadows lengthening, closing the distance. One of the figures moved forward, lifting a hand that was less like a limb and more like a branch, sharp and gnarled. It pointed to the edge of the cliff, its voice a guttural command. Go on, it urged, its eyes gleaming with a sickly, hungry light. You have reached your destination. My body felt numb, my willpower slipping under the weight of that gaze. I took a step back, heels teetering on the edge as I felt myself drawn toward the void. My heels teetered on the edge, and for a split second I felt myself sway, staring down into the abyss below. The fog, thick and swirling, seemed to open like a maw, inviting me into its depths. My head was spinning, thoughts blurring as though I was losing myself piece by piece. Every shadow, every whisper in the darkness felt like it was merging with me, pulling me into a part of itself. No, 
I whispered, gripping my own arms as if holding on to myself was the only thing keeping me from falling. This, this can't be real. The laughter in my head echoed back, mingling with the wind and mocking my defiance. The figures encircling me edged closer, their dark forms twisting in ways that made my stomach churn. They were no longer just shadows, they were my own fears, each one shaped like a familiar regret, a buried memory. And there, right before me, was the figure with the hollow eyes and twisted grin, the one that had appeared on my screen. Its grin spread wider, too wide, stretching across its face in a grotesque, unnatural way. Why are you running? it asked, its voice dripping with mock curiosity, though I sensed its patience was wearing thin. Did you think you could just keep driving, keep running from it all? Leave me alone, I shouted, backing away further, feeling the cliff's edge underfoot give slightly as loose rocks scattered into the void. My heart raced, the fog closing in, and my mind spun as memories flashed before me. My arguments, my mistakes, every time I'd tried to escape from something I couldn't face. It felt like the shadows were peeling me open, exposing every fear, every regret, feeding on my weaknesses. The figure took a step forward, closing the distance between us. Its eyes bore into mine, penetrating and cold, as though it was seeing straight into my soul. You're already here. There's no going back, it said, gesturing to the cliff, as if it was offering me some kind of twisted mercy. I could feel its will pressing down on me, its invisible hands guiding me, pulling me to the edge. Isn't this what you wanted? To escape? In a last desperate effort, I tore my gaze away and broke into a sprint, shoving past the figures, feeling their cold, clawed hands scratch my skin. I pushed through, stumbling and staggering, the cliff fading behind me. But the path was gone. The trees around me blurred, shifting, twisting into a landscape that felt entirely alien. I stumbled, my legs weak, barely able to keep myself upright as I realized that the forest itself was morphing, stretching its shadows out like fingers reaching for me. And then my foot hit something solid. I looked down to see a trail, my trail, the same path I'd taken before, looping back yet again. The shadows encircled me once more, their voices whispering in a language I couldn't understand, but whose meaning felt carved into my bones. The fog thickened, swirling around my legs, binding me like chains. I felt something cold and slick brush against my hand, and when I looked, it was that familiar face, staring back, a silent taunt in its eyes. You never left, it whispered, almost gently. You've always been here. As I tried to scream, the fog engulfed me entirely, dragging me backward. I was pulled into the earth, into that endless, hungry darkness, the laughter and whispers echoing around me until everything went black. And as the last shred of light disappeared, the GPS voice chuckled one last time, softly, cruelly. You have reached your final destination. The end. Subscribe for more true scary stories. Thanks for watching.